Hello and welcome to this video. This is Tim and we're on the rapid road to improvement. The candidates has been cancelled halfway through. So we'll just get on and play some chess and we're playing someone rated 2000, which is quite a bit higher than me. So we're going into a Sicilian defense and I want to try and use some arrows and circles and stuff. A4, interesting. That's obviously to just kind of um, cramp down black and, and stop him achieving b5. But let's use that tempo to gain a tempo on the e4 pawn with an attack. And I think knight c6 seems sensible. And we'll go from there, really. Okay, so d3, preparing something like bishop g5. I think we'll play bishop e7. We'll, we're not going to want to play that move anyway, so play it now. And then that means bishop g5 wouldn't come with any kind of tempo. We probably just want to get castled now. Um... And other, we also have some ideas about knight e5, but the bishop will drop back to a2. Um, knight d4 is another idea. Maybe even knight e5 to gain really good control of d4. But I think the other option is to play h6 now. I'm going to go with h6. It is a slight weakening, but I want to just hold up things on the king's side, not allow bishop g5 if we can avoid it. And we'll and then we'll see. Okay, so bishop e3 comes. Now that means we might have knight g4. Where would the bishop go? The bishop would have to go back to... Yeah, let's go with knight g4. So here's the idea. Let's use an arrow. We're going to go knight g4. And then, assuming the bishop moves, we then get to play knight e5. And we can trade off a pair of knights. So let's give that a whirl. If the bishop doesn't move, we're just gonna we're just going to exchange. Ah, okay, bishop e5. I hadn't thought about that. That's that's a nice move. Okay, okay. So what about bishop f6 and then play knight e5 anyway? Just kind of try and insist on this plan. Let's let's give that a whirl. So the idea is to play knight g e5 and then have try and get some mass exchanges on e5 and leave us with a knight on that square hitting the bishop on c4 and exchange off some of white's attacking potential. So a little bit behind on the time but not too bad. All right, so white goes for knight b5 to hit the d6 pawn. Okay, that's nice. Now we can just play knight e5 anyway, right? That blocks the bishop. Um, so let's continue with that plan and then if nothing changes we'll just kick the knight away I say just but that should be good and we're also threatening perhaps to, to, to snag a bishop on c4 okay so knight takes I think bishop bishop takes is fine here also knight takes We'll pre-move the recapture. I played the bishop takes because this actually asks a question of the bishop, makes it hard for, for white to just keep it there. Okay, so the question is, can we take this bishop? If bishop take, we can actually also take down here. Another question is, if we castle, white immediately has, but what about moving the queen? Queen f6, queen f6 looks, ah, oh, queen f6, the threat is on the bishop, but then knight c7 comes. So that's an issue for us. We have to make sure about that. If bishop takes f4, um, queen takes g7, hits the rook with tempo. And then after the rook moves, well, let's just have a look at the bishop takes f4, queen takes here. If rook here, then doesn't white not pick up this? So that's the question. But what white is assuming is that after bishop takes f4, if that assuming that works, bishop takes f4, queen takes here, and then you're hitting d6 twice. And it's a little difficult to, to, pro, to, pro, to protect that. Okay. So let's think about what options we have. We could play g5, which closes the g-file and forces black to take here. It's a bit drastic. It looks like it could fail to some tactics, but maybe there's nothing immediate. The idea would be if g5 and bishop g3, then we kick the knight away. If we castle, then bishop takes h6, and mate is... Well, not, it's not threatening mate, actually, but we don't have a good response. 
Um, what else? Have we got anything else that we could try here? Okay, I'm going to go with g5. And if bishop g3, maybe that we can take this pawn here. So let's go with this. It looks drastic, but let's go with it. And the idea, of course, is to pre-move this recapture. And if bishop takes e5, we're forking the queen and the bishop on c4. And we should be able to pick up the light squared bishop. And then I would be surprised if black could be worse after that. The king side is a little bit dicey, but if, you know, if these two pieces come off, then white's attacking potential is limited. So the question now is whether we've spent a little bit too much time on that. So queen moves, where to? Okay, uh, the idea, well, knight takes c4 is possible because we're defending this one. The other option is to kick the knight first, and then after knight moves, then we take the bishop. That looks to me like that should work. I can't see why that wouldn't work. Can you play knight here? No, knight takes here isn't possible. And then the, then the question is whether who's better in that who's better in that ending. But this knight doesn't have any squares to go to, so I would be surprised if white's a lot better there. So the idea is knight c3. Okay, you, you play that. That makes sense also, so that you can recapture. But let's Let's do that. Then you're hitting d5. And then if I play that, you could play knight here. Yeah, that's good. That's interesting. So what do we do about that? I w did want to take this. But then I might be forced after knight takes c4 to play e5. And then I can imagine something like knight here to come into these squares, but I think that's okay. So the idea is to play e5 to close down the queen's attack. So the queen is attacking here, and the knight is attacking here. So by playing e5, we'll block that, and then we can look to shift that. Let's just see if there's any other way of protecting this pawn. We can't really move it forward because other than knight d6 check. It's not the end of the world, but we don't really want to allow that. And we can't bring anything else to. So we're going to continue with our plans as what we intended to do. And then the idea would be to play bishop e6, bishop e6 um, maybe play b5, maybe play... So there is a hole here on f5 which this knight could come into. But we can always use this bishop to grab anything that lands on either this square or this square. So if the knight were to go back here and try and jump into these spots can use this bishop sitting on e6 to protect those squares. Okay, b4 by white. Now, why does white want me to take that? If we work out why white is looking to open the b-file, that would be interesting. Okay, so white wants to white wants to weaken the defense of the e5 pawn, but I think we should be able... Okay, so the idea is that even if bishop e6 takes, bishop takes... And once we recapture, this queen is looking at the e5 square. But that's that's difficult to do something about, actually. But if we just take this, what's happening there? Is that... I think we can take this pawn. I don't see an immediate way of... For some, we obviously don't want b takes, because then we lose the defense of the e5 pawn. Now we're ready to play bishop e6. Okay, so white's really going for it here. But now bishop e6 comes with tempo because it's hitting the knight. And I think the knight has to move. So let's play that. And we're probably going to encourage white to play d5. But then the question is whether then that's both good and bad. It means that white can't use the d5 square for its knight. So we'll play bishop d7. We're ready to get castled. Maybe play bit queen f6. We have won a pawn. So um, white sacrificed that pawn to try and get play. We see there's the knight coming into b6 we have to be a little bit concerned about. But we can also play b5 here, and if a, b, we can play bishop takes b5. But I think, I think that's a threat now to play. Oh, we've got knight takes d6. I completely missed that. So white's missed that as well, interestingly. So the moving the bishop here means that the queen didn't protect the d6 square. So now we actually have to protect that pawn here. But what we can also do, in fact, is play bishop b5. And that pins the knight. Now white will have to play queen d3, because there's no other way to protect this knight. 
And then does rook c8 not just win this knight? This is very interesting. Maybe knight takes d6 is forced. I think it might be. And, I'm, and because I think he might play knight d6, I'm going to... I'm going to pre-move that recapture. Um, okay, so now he's giving up this. So I'm going to just take this rook here. And now we have to decide, do we pick up this knight or do we move our bishop? Which is a better piece? It's hard to know. It's hard to know exactly. Um, bishop b5, then the knight would come back here. Yeah, it's, it's not clear there. King to king takes. Now, I think we would want to get castled here, but what happens if h4? It's not, it's not clear. But I think queen c8 here threatens queen c4 check. That's a useful move to make. We're also hitting the c pawn, so we probably want to play for white queen d3. But then, can't we play this move? Let's go queen c5 here. See, I'm thinking if we if we play this and we exchange, and he will have rook a3, and then maybe. Um, queen c5. Now, if rook a3. definitely close this position it's hard for me to tell who's better here I think rook a4 might be good though that's the problem but but if rook a4 rook a and queen takes we've got queen takes c2 yeah I think if rook takes we can take here and if queen takes we can take here so I'm gonna get castled and we'll see what white goes with here so either the c2 pawn okay so now the a pawn hangs and we've got some checks on a1 okay So we can either check here, or we can come down to this square here. Let's do that, because that looks like a good square for the black queen. The main problem now for is, is time, but we're threatening mates, so this is quite an issue here. So queen b1, perhaps? Queen b1 stops the mate. We've gone for the check now. Now king here. What about f5? Can we blow that open? can but then let's go queen here we're hitting this pawn here then maybe we can play f5 it's a bit risky it's definitely risky but it could work because then we're hitting f2 we're threatening this and then taking on e2 we've got to play we've got to defend that maybe okay well we're going for it now we're running a little bit of short of time um if you play queen here to threaten me we can take this with check so the question is for me, I think we have at least a perpetual here. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Um, we'll see. Well, we definitely have a perpetual because we can because we can continue there. The question is, do we have more? With check here, you'd have to come here. But then I don't have any more checks. And it's hard to. So we'll go for this. So at the moment we're going with this, and you want that. So I think we want to take this with check, and then once again, if we can take this d pawn, then we can actually get on. If if we can take this pawn with check at any point, then we can bring the queen back to f7 to, to prevent against the main. So. There's the check again. Now, if you come out, we're going to take d7 with check. And if you don't, if you go back, we definitely... There's the there's the um, defense. Okay, so now, what about f7 here? Let's try this. You're going to check me on the back rank, and I'm going to go king g7. Black is winning here unless we get mated. So this is the question. Are we getting mated here? And time is very short, but my position, I think, objectively, is probably winning. Maybe white has enough, but the problem is actually it's a little difficult. We're going to come here. We are also taking this now. This is also slightly a problem for you. We're taking 
the b7 rook so could the b7 rook move it sure could where could it move to it could move back you want to check me here that wouldn't be mate that wouldn't be mate but it would be bad for me and you are getting in there so maybe coming up here oh that's tricky now and I don't have any check I do have one check actually does that help me not really so the check here king up checks here I think we want a perpetual if we can find one because I'm nervous but then I'm going to lose on time okay fine so now I'm going to take this and we'll see whether you've got a mate you may well have one but I am at least controlling h6 with my Queen. Hopefully, I mean, if he plays queen g8, I have to go king of six. I have to go here, so there's no problem. If you go rook here, it's clear queen h5 is forced. Do you have any other checks here? No. You've got queen g8. And then I block with the rook, I think. But maybe then queen e8. Maybe I need to play this. I'm going with this one. So we need to go back here, otherwise you will, you will play your rook in. So white's most likely going to win this because of my time pressure, but I think my position is okay here. I think we both, I think white has a perpetual. It's clear white has a perpetual. So on queen g8, we have to go queen king f6. If queen h8, we have to go king g6. What we don't I want is allow that second rook check. Wow, okay. Now we're going to push this pawn forward. Oh, we've got another check now. You can't check me here though. B6 is covered. I think we have to play this now check here does that win the rook maybe if you take this what are we doing and we, we can't check down here so let's take this one god knows what's going on now i think we're losing this we have a check here Oh, now, okay. So we want to check on this square here, if possible. I want to play queen here check, actually. Because that would trade queens into a winning endgame, most likely. We've got to check here. Ah, and mate. Okay. I'm not too disappointed with that. We obviously had a good uh, position. It's just paused there. Um, so just taking it back to the open. Yeah, like I said, not too disappointed with that. We had a good position. We're obviously winning at some stage. Um, but I, you know, my opponent was a strong player and was putting pressure on me, making me find moves. And I got into time pressure, as I do in most games. And therefore, I was kind of unable to, to continue to find saving moves or the best moves um so we'll just run through the opening quickly so that we can check where we went uh check where we left theory if you like i think it so up until here all standard bishop c4 is obviously a little bit unusual e6 is one of the main moves 
A4 of the suit, very unusual, never been played before. We understand the idea of it, but it's it's amazing that you play the Sicilian defense and you can still have a brand new position after the fourth move. Um, let's just um, then jump forward to any critical points. Okay, so I've brought the game forward to this position here. Uh, this was the point where we played F5. Now, it's a very committal decision. And we understand the idea, we want to play f5 and then take this and then open up an attack on the f-pawn. But with a rook already on the 7th, this square here, uh, let's try a different one, different colour, yeah, this square is vulnerable and these squares are vulnerable. So when the queen comes down, we've got immediate mating threats for white. So the question is, do we have something different here in this position? Um, pawns are equal. White's king may be marginally safer, but though we have a very active queen, the queen is also protecting the a6 pawn. So maybe we can find a better move here. Um, you know, is it possible just to play something like rook c8, threatening rook take, take c2? It's hard for white to protect that. So let's just have a look at this move. As, a, as, a, as an alternative. We've got here, queen d7 obviously hits the rook and hits f7, but that gives us this pawn with check. And that means potentially that we can, um, we've got time to do something. Let's just see what happens if king goes back. Obviously still got this mating threat and there's no way to protect the rook, but then we can actually play rook here. Now, the d6 pawn has no protection, so queen takes d6. And now in this position, it's hard to know what's really going on. We could play queen takes c2, queen takes c5. And this pawn may be a problem for black. I think white is wet better here. Um, so... I'm not sure about that. Let's just see if white's better and by how much. Uh, I would guess about maybe plus one here. Okay, it's actually equal here, and that's because I think blacks has enough activity. Queen d1, king g2, rook d8, and we're actually already firmly on the d pawn. Um, it looks like black white is playing rook b8 to trade rooks on this file and it looks like the black queen is active enough to create um, perpetual check threats on the white king that's the that's the sense i'm getting okay um all right i've brought the game forward to this point we've just taken this pawn with check and white went running uh, there's the time at this point now again we play rook f7 which seemed fine to me but did allow all these checks. I just wonder whether we can play queen f7. Um, the White can't play queen takes d6 because queen takes b7. White could play queen c6. Obviously, if, if we trade here, then this ending is winning for black. So white can't really trade here. So what could white do instead? Something like just queen c6 makes a lot of sense. We're hitting the a-pawn. Um, and, and we're attacking the queen, so the queen has to move. We can't necessarily... I mean, we can play queen a2. Queen a2. And then possibly we get this with the mate threat once again, and we could get some kind of repetition here. Let's just see if in this position here... Um, after queen c6, we have anything better than queen a2. Obviously, we have a, a, a pawn advantage here. We have to move our queen. Where, what else could we do? We could play to try and play queen f6. And then after queen takes... Sorry, queen f6. And then after queen takes here, we could play this. Obviously, the exchange of queens is probably good for black. This ending should be better, if not winning. But I think white just, what would white do here? We could play queen a2, the pawn is pinned. I think white will always have enough play here because of the open position of the white king. 
Uh, it's actually seeing why it's quite a bit better still because of this white king. So I think if we go back to the play point where I played f5, we're likely to discover that that isn't the isn't isn't a good move. Okay, so this is the point where we played f5, and indeed it thinks the position is pretty much equal. Doesn't want to play f5. So let's have a look. f5 was played, and that gives white a good advantage. But the best. Okay, it's actually pretty equal now. It's, it's thinking about it longer. We came in, queen takes e4 check, queen g4 check is correct, king g2, queen e4 check is correct. Okay, still following the computer line, queen e4 check. And now it actually wants to go back to f1. So the line that he played, which allows me to take this pawn with check, does seem to be better for black, okay? Now we have a choice between rook f7 or queen f7. Rook f7, which is what I played, it seems to be about equal. We are, we are. Um, let me see, what are we, we're a couple of pawns up here, but white's always going to have enough play. So rook f7 was fine. Queen e8 was played, and king g7, that's fine. Now... The best move here, this is where it's difficult to see this in time pressure. It seems like white's always got enough here, and it wants to, to push in with the check. This is what I played, that's fine. King came up, we come back with the check. And now in this position, actually, white has now better than a perpetual check. Rook c7 was the move. That's interesting, yeah, that didn't occur to me. I was running short of time here, we can see 51 seconds, and so didn't see that. And the move I played was again trying to get this perpetual check and King G and and now that Black's found some some hiding places again fairly equal. And here, oh my goodness me, ha, that's very interesting. I completely missed Rook B seven check, and that exchanges off rooks, and now Black's just a couple of pawns up. So if I had seen that tactic, which is why I actually. White can't pop out, and if he can't pop out this way, then you can see that the perpetual check's kind of more or less insured for black. So he's never really worse here. Okay, that's um, that's helpful. Shame to lose with a having played well, but these things happen. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more rapid chess soon.